It's a train ride to the clouds. It's a ride through history and an experience that will leave you breathless. Literally. The oxygen level at the highest point on this line is only 60% of what you would experience at sea level. With the train station perched atop Pikes Peak in the Colorado Rockies, this is the highest point that you can reach on a train in North America. And the trip up here is nothing short of amazing. Conventional railroads almost never have a grade of more than 4%, which means that the train gains 4 feet in elevation for every 100 feet traveled. But this railway blows that norm out of the water with a staggering 25% grade, gaining 25 feet in elevation while traveling the same distance. How do these extreme trains accomplish such a feat? There's only one way to find out. Nestled in the front range of the Rocky Mountains, the Broadmoor, Manitou, and Pikes Peak Cog Railway stands as a testament to human determination and as a window into the awe-inspiring beauty of nature. The Rocky Mountains are home to several massive peaks whose summit reaches above 14,000 feet. These are locally known as 14ers, and Colorado is home to 58 of them. Aboard this historic railway, we will be ascending to the summit of one of Colorado's most famous 14ers. While the line may be historic, the tracks and trains are all brand new. More on that after we reach the summit. The adventure begins at the base station, where passengers eagerly await their ascent. With such steep hills ahead of us, it's understandable to be nervous about how this train can tackle such steep grades. But not to worry, because this is not a normal railway. With almost every train in North America, locomotives of all types, electric, diesel, and steam all move their trains forward in the same way by using the power of their driving wheels, which grip the steel rails and move the train forward. Despite the size of these large trains, the surface area of the wheel which makes physical contact with the rails is only about the size of a dime. This allows trains to roll down the tracks with a shockingly low amount of friction, which is why trains are so ruthlessly efficient at moving their freight and passengers. But this same lack of friction that's a benefit for conventional trains is the mortal enemy of our train today. Therefore, the outer wheels of this train are completely unpowered and only serve to keep us on the tracks. They play no role in moving our train whatsoever. Another solution will be needed. Enter the Cog Railway. Also known as a rack railway, it is a marvel of engineering that enables trains to traverse steep inclines and navigate challenging terrain with ease. At the heart of their functionality lies a unique cogwheel mechanism, which is mounted in the center of our engine and meshes with a center rack rail. It's difficult to get a good look at this on our modern locomotive, but there is still a great way to discover how this all works. Built in 1893, this steam engine served on the Cog Railway for 46 years. It now sits on display in a park in downtown Manitou Springs, where visitors can still get an up-close look at how Cog Railways used to work. And the basic principles haven't changed. You can clearly see how the cog wheel on the engine fits perfectly into the rack rail on the tracks. This innovative design provides exceptional traction and stability, allowing trains to ascend and descend gradients that would be impossible for conventional locomotives to conquer. As the train moves forward, the cog wheels engage with the rack rail, effectively gripping onto it and propelling the train forward and upward, or controlling its descent on the way downhill. Cog railways also incorporate additional safety features such as brakes and anti-rollback mechanisms to enhance control and stability. Now that our fears have been assuaged, I'd say it's time to climb aboard and begin our ascent to the top of the mighty Pikes Peak.
We are now about halfway into the climb when we reach Mountain View. Here, we passed the train from this morning, now on its return journey down the mountain. Notice the switch operator, who remains in this trackside shed at this location all day to ensure the safe operation of the complicated switch mechanisms. These turnouts are made more complex by the fact that not only the outside rails need to move, but the center rack rail must also be configured by hand so that trains may navigate the junction. We can tell we are getting close to the summit as we pass the timberline, the point in elevation on the mountain where the extreme conditions make it virtually impossible for trees to grow. From here to the summit, we enter an otherworldly moonscape, reminding us of just how inhospitable this alpine environment could have been for those that built this railway. At last, the summit looms into view. A beacon of achievement perched at an elevation of 14,115 feet above sea level. Stepping off the train, Passengers are greeted by a panorama that stretches to the horizon, showcasing a vast expanse of snow-capped peaks and endless skies. Now safely at the top, let's take this opportunity to learn more about the history of the Cog Railway and explore the thoroughly modern train that brought us here today. Construction on the railway began in 1889 and the first train summited Pikes Peak two years later, in June of 1891. Instead of pulling their cars like a conventional train, the steam engines which first worked the railway would push their consist of wooden coaches up the hill, thus limiting the chances of a car breaking away and rolling down the hill uncontrolled. This is still how the trains operate today. Although this is a historic line, the operation is now thoroughly modern in every aspect. In the early 2000s, the infrastructure and the trains themselves were slowly beginning to create a situation that was both unsafe and increasingly expensive to maintain. So in March of 2018, the decision was made to close the line indefinitely. Later that same year, an agreement was signed to completely replace the track, rebuild the facilities, and purchase three new train sets, which were delivered in 2021. These brand new trains were built by Stadler Rail of Switzerland, appropriate since Switzerland is where the cog or rack and pinion railway was invented. Each train set consists of one diesel electric locomotive, two coaches, and a cab control car. In addition, this snowblower, number 30, was purchased along with the train sets, albeit from a different company. We were lucky enough to snag the front row, also known as the driver's view seat in the cab control car for our journey. 
There we were treated to a tutorial of the driver's console from the operator. The high-tech controls include these displays, which give the driver ample information about their train, including the tractive force on each of the four powered cog wheels beneath the engine. This graph shows positive values for traction on the way up the hill and negative values for dynamic braking on the way down. The driver can also control the train's doors, monitor the power supply, and be alerted via these warning lights if anything is impeding the safe operation of the train. After having explored the summit for over an hour, the effects of the high elevation were starting to take their toll on myself and my fellow passengers. At this altitude, there is only 60% of the oxygen that you would experience at sea level. This manifests itself as dizziness, shortness of breath, and confusion at best, and headaches, nausea, and other more severe symptoms at worst. As dizzy as I was feeling, it certainly made me wonder how people are able to summit Mount Everest, which is over twice the height. Luckily, the worst of these effects can be avoided by just taking it easy, moving slowly, and avoiding any heavy exertion while at the summit. During the rebuilding of the COG Railway, the nearby city of Colorado Springs was also working hard on construction of this brand new visitor center at the summit. Now it's time to put the air brakes on the cars and the dynamic brakes on the engine to the test as we head back down to the last lofty elevation of 6,300 feet back in Manitou Springs. After the passengers have disembarked, the train pulls out of the station and is moved into the shed until tomorrow, when it will conquer Pikes Peak all over again. If you support the channel with a super thanks, or pick up something from our online store linked below, your contribution goes directly towards making filming trips like this possible and covers the cost of licensing historic footage. If you're not quite ready to come back down to sea level yet, check out this video next for some more mountain railroading. Thank you for watching Real Weekly.